So hello, Jan Philippe Albrecht. Hi. Thank you very much for talking to us at the Green European Journal today. Um, recently, we've been hearing a lot of discussion about um, robotics and artificial intelligence, both in terms of the potential that this technology brings, but also the transformations that it could um, incur for society. And some people seem a little bit concerned about what this would mean. So people like, for example, leaders in the tech industry, Elon Musk, to thinkers like Stephen Hawking, or even policymakers at the United Nations. You're a German MEP and you have a, a good grasp of what the practical things are behind these discussions and not just the policy side of it. So in your opinion, what is all the fuss about and are people right to be concerned and worried? I think that people are right to be concerned because uh, with automatization, with robotics, there will be many new uh, developments in our society which we have to think about very thoroughly in order to uh, get the right uh, policies on the ground uh, in order to also control the consequences of it. For example, in the social area where um, studies are saying that even until 2030 there could be a loss of around one third until almost half of the jobs uh, which we have today. This is radical, this is massive, ma more massive than anything else. Uh, and uh, the effect not only on uh, like labor situation but also on social systems and on the way how we perceive work in our life will be uh, completely different uh, if we uh, are really facing these challenges. And the things like Elon Musk, uh, he highlighted the fact that we are already developing artificial intelligent drones or tanks in, for war warfare, for example. And the question, how do we ever want to control that to not get out of control when we know that the, even the best kept secrets from the NSA are uh, hacked by the Russian authorities, uh, we can see that there's a high risk in, in all of these developments and we need to be concerned. And can you tell us a bit, because obviously you're very familiar with the state of the debate on this regulation about robotics and artificial intelligence at the EU level and in the European Parliament in particular. Uh, is it the case that there is some difference, for example, with how prepared certain member states are or their positions on this? I think that there's not such a big difference because nobody is really prepared. That's the real bad news. Uh, we have a situation where in no member state of the European Union and also not in the European Commission, there is a significant debate about getting regulation on the ground for the age of robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, and that in times where we already in some of the member states of the European Union have, for example, self-driving delivery robots uh, strolling through the city, uh, and there's no rule, no civil law on the question what happens if these robots are doing, uh, are causing accidents. Who's then liable? It's, is it the producer of it? Is it the, uh, like, uh, the one who is using these delivery robots, the service? Or is it the individual uh, who is in the accident? Or uh, it's, it's completely unclear. And so even if these standard simple questions for the next generation of developments are unclear. Uh, but there's, uh, on all the rest, there's no significant debate. We have just one first report here in the European Parliament on liability schemes, but it's full of questions and not full of answers. Mm -hmm. And so in response to these kind of possibilities and, and dilemmas, we know that um, the, the Greens in the European Parliament have actually put forward, um, have taken a position on this and put forward 10 recommendations. Um, and how do you see the, these recommendations? Are they sufficient? And what are the main issues that Greens are trying to draw attention to and raise awareness about? The most important recommendations which we worked out in our uh, small working group here in, in the group of the Greens uh, is that we, first of all, would like to have a clear mandatory uh, a demand for um, uh, impact assessment so that everyone who is developing these services has to do impact assessments on the ethical uh, consequences, on uh, social issues, on human rights issues. Uh, and that we say that in these areas there need to be also clear safeguards uh, in order to assure that, for example, uh, there's always a human responsible for certain decisions of machines, that there's no automatism that machines can just do what they want. 
especially with machine learning, where they learn new things and can do new things on their own. There needs to be somebody who controls what they are learning because they are like kids, you know. If there's nobody uh, responsible looking at them, then they will do bad things maybe and it will hurt all of us and, um, and learn the wrong things perhaps uh, rather than to be educated. Uh, we need to educate these machines. So that's what we say. We need to make sure that they are secure, that they are safe, that there's minimum standards for IT security, that if there's a self-driving car out there, nobody can just hack it like it has happened on the uh, motorway when it's just driving 100 kilometers uh, per, per hour and somebody's just releasing the brake. Uh, that can be really, ex uh, really uh, dangerous. And uh, we are already see that with self-driving uh, uh, cars, uh, there have been severe accidents also. Uh, so um, I think that these recommendations are a first uh, indication of where do we have set standards. But they are also calling, our recommendations are also calling for, as first priority, for a thoroughly informed debate. Because we don't know either all of the answers yet on this uh, big transformation. What we need is a real informed debate in public. There need to be many people involved and there need to be public authorities and independent bodies who uh, gather information and spread it uh, in, in uh, an informative way to, to people out there. It's, it's a huge challenge uh, to get technology into a political debate in a way that it is really uh, interesting everybody uh, for everybody that people understand it and there we need more experts also more experts who are not only techies and understanding everything but who are able to explain what that means if for example a machine can learn on its own uh, what does it mean how can we get into uh, that development in order to make sure that ethical safeguards uh, are implied or how can we uh, discuss uh, the technological change for example of robotics uh, in in a situ uh, in, or in in a, in a context where we also get on the plate a debate on like basic income for example to debate okay if this is the effect of technological development either we say we don't want that development or the consequences of it that we have to completely change our social systems for example and um, as soon as we get into these areas, the, the real consequences of technology, I think there are many people very concerned and very much interested in to get into, getting into this debate because this technological change will affect all policy areas. All, everything will be put into question. And um, uh, that's also why we need to get everybody on board. Uh, here in the, in the Parliament group, for example, we try to really get everybody from all the different committees in, uh, involved because it's about the question of military robots in the same uh, way of the question of uh, law enforcement, security, of workers' rights. For example, when you work together with a robot, does it affect your rights, for example, uh, or the working uh, uh, atmosphere somehow, the social rights, or what is if you even get health issues with machines because you will get implants uh, which are mainly uh, intelligent, for example. What do I have as a human as rights to, to, for example, change the systems uh, which are implanted into me? We, we get more and more into this uh, uh, developments and, and that has uh, so many consequences. If we talk about the consequences, it's getting really visible. The famous sci-fi writer Isaac Asimov uh, wrote that there should be certain laws of robotics and that these should be that robots should first of all protect humans, they should obey orders and they should preserve themselves. And maybe we can draw a few parallels there with the recommendations of the Greens. Do you think this framework could be useful for thinking about how we uh, keep the relationship between humans and robots in a certain way and how do we ensure that this doesn't get out of our control? Uh, absolutely. I think that these rules or laws uh, presented by Asimov were the starting point for our thoughts here uh, in the Green Group. Um, they are already like 50, 60 years old, but uh, they are very currently still standing. And I think that uh, is the right philosophy behind, because the philosophy is that uh, robots by nature, they are not uh, better or worse than humans. Um, they are like us and uh, we need basic values and understandings of how do we want to live together. 
we have had the opportunity of learning in history about many catastrophes uh, and we are inheriting that in our societies. Uh, machines still have to understand and learn that and therefore I think they need to get implanted these laws, these basic values from the beginning to make sure that there's some basic values, you don't hurt anybody, you don't uh, like take over control about anybody and that of course the machine uh, is not worth more than a human uh, but rather has to serve the human than to uh, to develop an own personality because we don't develop human uh, robots in order to get more humans we develop them uh, them in order to get a better life as humans they are still the tools for us uh, to to serve and not uh, the ones who who yeah have to create an own field for for living i mean uh, i think we should make clear that uh, there's no uh, loss of control for for us humans because that would also mean loss of control for our human values. Mm -hmm. And can I ask you about your view of how Greens approach this topic in general? Do you think that there is a side of Greens which is somehow a bit uh, technophobic and that they are a bit reluctant maybe to get into this topic maybe because of a, a desire to be cautious or a kind of precautionary uh, principle? Um, should there be more of a push from the side of the Greens for initiatives to work on this issue, for example, setting up a special European Parliament committee on robotics and artificial intelligence, or are there other initiatives that you would suggest how we can move forward on this issue? I think it's two different things. One is the question how, like, um, how you stand towards technology. Do you think that uh, further development uh, is uh, positive by nature? And yes, there are challenges, but we'll manage. Or do you think that it's negative and we will be facing huge challenges if we go forward? I think both of these uh, philosophies are in the Green parties as well as in other parts of society. Um, and it's good that we have a debate with each other because neither of them are true alone. I think it's both. We have huge chances and we have huge risks at the same time. And we should uh, uh, look at both and decide on how do we want to go forward because society will be going forward. Uh, but the other debate is whatever philosophy you might follow, uh, nobody can ignore that we have this technolo technological development and these challenges upcoming. So I think whatever philosophy we might have and from which angle we are entering the discussion, we all should agree that the issue itself is so important that we need to get into it, that we need to discuss about it, even uh, uh, or especially because we have so many viewpoints, we can deliver for quite a good result when we start into the discussion as Greens, for example, with these different emotions also in. We could have a, a representative debate for society in our own parties and so we should be the first to set up uh, committees and working groups and a call for them in order to have an impact on this development rather than, as others do, to just wait and see for technology because the precautionary principle, for example, is something which we all share in different uh, ways, but we all say uh, we don't want to get uh, naively into a new technology like uh, nuclear energy or coal uh, energy uh, without thinking about the implications. We want to think uh, sustainable, so we also want to do that in this technological development.